Mr. Tosk. Yeah, there, there, I understand. It's so very hard to be the elephant of the deep blue sea. Stop, stop, stop it. Stop it. Walruses never cry! You know what I love about modern cinema? The fact anyone at any time can make a movie. Does it make them less special? Not really, it just makes movies higher in number. I could go outside my house right now and film myself on my phone, maybe get a few friends involved and hey presto, I filmed an entire movie to put online. It's really only when your ideas get too ambitious for your own good that you need to source out investors and publishers willing to distribute your movie worldwide. Production quality costs money, but one of the pioneers that proved independent movies are viable for young filmmakers was Kevin Smith. For anyone who doesn't know, he's the writer and director behind The View Ask Universe, Clerks, Dogma and so on. When he made Clerks, he had to sacrifice a lot in order to make his passion come true. To fund the movie, he sold a massive bulk of his comic book collection, maxed out his credit cards, borrowed free grand from his parents and parlayed a settlement for a car into it. He filmed in the same store he actually worked at and was only able to film during the night time. He would literally clock in for work, then for 21 straight days, clock out again at 11pm, film until 4am, then sleep in the store to be working again for 6. If the film failed, he would be in permanent debt for the rest of his life. Luckily for him, it wasn't. Why am I telling you this? Because it's proof that no matter how bad it may seem for young filmmakers, there's stories out there that prove any film could be made if you have the drive to do so. Kevin Smith is one of those directors who seems to have a knack for just making anything he wants. And so, you get movies like Tusk. How scared were you? Oh, I don't mind admitting I was terrified. I know you've probably been scared a few times in your life, Mr. Brighton. But I would wager to say that you've never known true terror. And I became intimately familiar with terror that night as I swam. This was a film that was devised as a joke on Kevin Smith's podcast. They heard about a gum tree ad where a man was looking for a lodger who could live in his apartment rent free so long as he dressed as a walrus at all times. The ad itself was actually a prank posted by Craig Parkinson. They discussed how funny a movie about this actually happening in a horror context would be, and after a fan vote, the film was shot in 15 days. <laughs> With most of the budget going towards acquiring the rights to use the song Tusk by Fleetwood Mac. Absolutely killer song, by the way. The film follows that Gumtree ad nearly identically. A podcast owner who seeks out weird people to make fun of online comes across Michael Parks, who has strange tales to tell of when he was in the Navy. Only he drugs Justin Long and begins to perform surgery on him to turn him into, you guessed it, a walrus. Man is a savage animal, Mr. Brighton. Better to be a walrus. Michael Parks and Justin Long are just incredible in this movie. It sounds so strange to say because it is about a guy becoming a walrus, but Michael Parks just goes all out for it like he's gunning for an Oscar. The best scenes in the movie for me was when he was relaying his stories to the main character Wally. He's so mesmerising with his presence and every inflection is perfect to hold your amazement. Then when he gets more mental, it's still captivating. He really seems like a man whose sanity has been stretched to breaking point. Do you to be the spider crawl up the water spout? Holy shit. Now came the rain and was the spider out. Long is also great. He's a douchebag, but he plays it really well so that we still sympathise with him and his reaction to Michael Park's antics are surprisingly realistic. Look at the way he falls after drinking this drugged tea. <laughs> Little things like that really make this film work. They sell it with so much seriousness that it transcends being goofy, and for many people will only serve to make it more funny. The film gets more and more mad the longer it goes on, and by the end, you do have Justin Long in a gigantic rubber walrus suit, where his only dialogue for the rest of the film is him barking and screaming. And he plays that side really well too. Check this eye roll he does when dancing in the water. The film is so self-aware of what it is, but still commits to delivering a true horror movie. Then there's Johnny Depp, and yikes, what the fuck were they thinking? 
LaPointe. That is my name, Guy LaPointe, and I spent 20 years as the inspector of the Sûreté du Québec. And but for the last 10 years of my life, I have been hunting an animal who is doing the masquerade as the man. Guy LaPointe is this movie's Achilles heel. He's a detective who's been tracking Michael Parks down, and every single scene he's in grinds the entire pacing to a dead standstill. I'm not joking, it's bizarre how bad these scenes feel. They're not entertaining, there's barely any plot development, and Johnny Depp's character just isn't that interesting to pull off ripping us away from the walrus shenanigans. And it's not like a scene here or there, no no no, it's like 15 minutes of pure torture. It honestly makes me wonder if Kevin Smith did it just to troll the audience that was watching, because it's that painful to sit through. Even his scene with Michael Parks. It's acted well, but it's just the two of them being weirdos for five minutes straight, but not in a comedic or dramatic fashion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> so, so you have some sort of creepy crawler thing in your toilet box. <laughs> Yeah, he's a big old brown rug tooth. What the hell is that? Tusk is an anomaly. On one hand, it's a near perfect acting masterclass with great body horror narrative, and on the other, it's a torturous stupid bore. In my opinion, the good stuff does outweigh the bad stuff going on, and it delivers one highly memorable experience. Oh, Check it out. Flippered friend, a fighting chance he never had. So. You will fight me, Mr. Oh.